Steven here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we are continuing my series of the best of the summoning mechanics special edition. Synchro monsters are some of the most powerful boss monsters we ever got in our extra decks. Having to do tons of math by adding a tuner and a non-tuner's levels together in order to equal something exactly in your extra deck is potentially one of the more cumbersome mechanics as well as one of the more combo heavy. Unlike Xyz and Lynx, where you can kind of just get away with putting a bunch of like things on board, with Synchros you gotta do a little bit of thinking. I do not like Synchros because I am bad at combo decks. So uh, if I say something that seems a little bit off or stupid, like I don't know what I'm talking about, you can be assured it's because I don't. <laughs> and without further ado, let's get started. Number 10 is an oldie but a goodie, TG Hyper Librarian. TG Hyper Librarian is a dark level 5 skell, skell caster, skull, skull caster, spell caster made of one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters with the following effect. If a monster is synchro summoned, draw one card. This card must be face up in the field in order to activate and resolve its effect. So you can't like synchro it away and then get a draw. It's got to be there when the other monster hits. When you are wombo comboing off and making your synchro climbing boards, trying to summon as many of these white boys as you can, one thing you will find is that when most of the monsters in your extra deck are created of two monsters, you are bleeding advantage. A great way to mitigate that is to draw a card every time you summon. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. And if you keep drawing into extenders, you can just keep going. There is a very good reason why this card has seen its fair share of time on the Forbidden Limited list, because if you got a couple of these on board, you can, uh, you can draw quite a bit. It's an if, it doesn't miss timing, and it is not a hard once per turn, so as long as you can keep synchro summoning, you can keep drawing. And if you have more than one TG Hyper Librarian, you can draw a lot. There's a reason why pretty much every extensive, crazy wombo combo with synchro monsters tends to include our librarian boy here. Overall, a fantastic card. Number 9 is Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron is an interesting card because not only is it a synchro monster, it is also a tuner monster itself. Meaning, uh, it can count as the tuner requirement for the synchro summon of another synchro monster. A synchro of a synchro. It's called Inception. Not only that, but there are certain synchro monsters in this game that require synchro tuner monsters in order to make them, so not only does he allow him to be a regular tuner, he's also a synchro tuner for some of those spicy boys. But what does he do? Level 2 Light Machine, when this card is Synchro Summoned, draw one card. I'm starting to detect a pattern here. Go figure. When you are wombo combing off and going even further beyond... <laughs> it does really help to draw some cards along the way to keep your advantage strong. Now that draw low would probably be enough to get it on the list, but... It does have a second effect. Once per chain. Ooh, don't see that often. During your opponent's main phase, quick effect immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon using this card. Synchro summoning on your opponent's turn due to card effect. Of all the mechanics that can cheese crap out of their extra deck when they're not supposed to, synchro summoning does seem to be particularly good at it. Synchro summoning on your opponent's turn is pretty freaking nifty because there are quite a few very strong synchro summon monsters that when they hit the board they do a thing something like your black rose dragon is a board nuke which is in and of itself a pretty strong effect but if you can do it on your opponent's turn during the middle of their combo plays is a lot more effective at stopping and clearing their board than it would be against an established board on your turn formula synchron's ability to synchro summon on your opponent's turn is quite tasty both effects of this card are just really good Number eight is Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. The Ice Barrier archetype has the popular distinction in that its main deck is not particularly very good, but its extra deck that it doesn't make very well is really good. And Trishula is probably the best one, although depending on the format, depending on the cards available due to the ban list, you could probably make an argument for some of the other ones. All of the Ice Barrier Synchro monsters are very strong, and I think all of them have seen time on the list in some fashion. Maybe not Gungnir. I don't remember if Gungnir ever got eliminated. When this card is Synchro Summoned, you can banish one card each from your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard. The card in the hand is chosen at random. Whoa! 
This effect might as well just say, when this card is summoned, win the game. Banishing three cards from your opponent is really good. The fact that two of them count towards their card advantage is, is, is fantastic. And hitting a choice card in their graveyard can pretty much botch any setup they've done. And if you didn't notice, this isn't a hard once per turn. Hell, it's not even a soft once per turn. If there is multiple Trishulas in the format, or you can just put this thing back and resummon it in some fashion, you can kind of just keep doing it as much as you want. Until your opponent's out of stuff. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. This card's been on and off the Forbidden Limit list for quite some time now, and every time it gets put back on it in some fashion, it is normally due to the fact because some jerk-off figured out a way <laughs> to loop the damn thing. It's got some retrains and stuff, but nothing will ever overshadow our Trishy boy here. Number 7 is Cosmic Blazer Dragon. It is a level 12 monster. <laughs> oh, big boy. Level 12 is pretty much the biggest level a monster can have actually printed on the card, so presumably when a monster has this kind of level, it must have a good effect. It probably also should be noted that this thing is very strong, and it is also balanced by the fact that it is made of a tuner synchro monster plus two or more synchro monsters. So this thing can only be made at a bare minimum with three other synchro monsters. So you have did some wombo combo stuff a la shooting quasar dragon to get to this bad boy. It must be synchro summoned. <laughs> Go figure. Quick effect. You can banish this thing until the end phase to apply one of these, uh, what is this? Like, three effects. Holy crap. Effecto numero uno. When your opponent activates a card or effect, negate that activation, and if you do, destroy that card. A simple Omni negate. When your opponent would summon a monster, negate that summon, and if you do, destroy that monster. A simple summon negate. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, negate that attack and end the battle phase. Okay, that last one's probably not gonna use too much, but even still, it's cool to have the option. This thing's basically like a solemn card on legs, giving you tons of options in order to stop things from doing things. Again, to invoke that shooting Quasar stuff, uh, yeah, this does feel very much like that. But being a level 12 Wind Dragon does have its, uh, its advantages, because Wind Attribute seems to be particularly good at Synchro Summoning, but also locking itself into said Wind Attribute, so this thing being a Wind is a boon to it. Jackie, demonstrate. Not only giving it negate, but giving it a way to get off the board, which could be an interesting way of actually having to avoid your opponent from baiting out its negate and then getting rid of it with something else. That's that's actually kind of something of note I should probably mention. It's like a big stardust. Speaking of big stardust, number six is Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Blue Eyes Tribute Summon Dragon here. <laughs> Might not be one of the most cleverly named monsters. Well, why are you pulling me? I'm right. What do we call this big synchro dragon? I don't know. Synchro dragon? But oh boy, is it a good synchro dragon. Made of one tuner and one or more non-tuner synchro monsters does mean it is a bit awkward to make, but if I told you that there was an entirely splashable engine called the Wind Witches that can just make this thing pretty much like better than everything else, uh, this seems like the only thing they actually make. It's They just exist to make this thing. What is my purpose? You make Crystal Wing. Oh my god. And that's fine, it's all you'd want to make, because this thing is good. Once per turn, another monster's effect activates. Quick effect, you can negate that activation, and if you do, destroy that card. And if you do that, it's one of those. This card's attack gains attack equal to the attack of the other monster's negated original attack. Attack. Oh boy! That's good. It negates a thing and gets bigger, meaning it's harder to get rid of. And it's already a, a 3k beater, so, you know, that's, that's a thing. But it does have a second effect because, you know, it's a best of an entire summoning mechanic. Of course they all have second effects. If this card battles an opponent's level 5 or higher monster, during damage calc, this card gains attack equal to the current attack of the monster battling it for that damage calculation only. So not only can it negate a thing, get bigger, if your opponent can still somehow muster a monster in order to try to crash over the thing, probably just gonna get bigger. It almost doesn't need that second effect. The first one's just fine. But the second one is kind of nifty to have that extra layer of just free protection. Oh boy, Crystal Wing, baby. Oh, here we go for another monster that I've never summoned before in the entirety of my Yu-Gi-Oh career. Junk Speeder, level five Wind Warrior. One Synchron Tuner plus one or more non-tuners. Having a specific archetype tuner monster may seem like a hindrance to a card, and I guess technically speaking it is. However, the Synchrons specialize in Synchro Summoning and arguably are some of the best tuner monsters that we have in the game. So uh, to call that a hindrance is really, really misleading. 
And the card works with Synchron Monsters, so uh, you'd only be playing it in a deck with them anyway. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can Special Summon as many Synchron Tuner Monsters as possible from your deck in defense position. What? Holy crap, that's broke. During the turn you activate this effect, you can only special summon monsters uh, from your extra deck that are synchro monsters. So, okay, I guess that is a thing. Otherwise, you just link like crazy. Which is probably why this card's not banned. Otherwise, it'd just be a, uh, it would just be a giant Hulk machine. Also, just like any good synchro monster, it has a second effect where when an attack is declared involving this card that was synchro summoned this turn, this card's attack can become double its original attack until the end of the turn. Not just the damage calc. Interesting. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. I mean, yeah. I love how all these good synchro monsters just have like this bonus battle protection for no reason in some fashion. I just think that's really funny. It's a level five wind synchro monster. You're probably going to synchro summon with it with one of the things that it's summoned, but uh, just in case you need to smash over something, it's it's certainly your option. Can we just appreciate though for the fact that this summons as many monsters as possible from your deck? That is absurd. Yay, here we go, a monster that I've summoned before, Naturia Beast. <laughs> Generic Synchro monsters tend to be better because if it can be summoned with basically anything, that's better than being very, very hard to summon with very specific things. Because more decks can use it, and more times than not, you're going to run into a point where you can make it. However, if a card's effect is so ridiculously stupid that even though it's landlocked to particular decks, doesn't make it any less worse of a card, that must be really telling you something about its effect. Oh, Natty Beast. What do you do? Made of one Earth Tuner Monster and one or more non- Tuner Earth Monsters. Okay, so you're playing Melfi's, and you make Big Kitty. <laughs> Big Kitty. <laughs> what did you get for it? When a spell card is activated, you can send the top two cards from your deck to the graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that spell card. This card must remain face up on the field in order to activate and resolve its effect. Dave, it's just a spell negate. It's not that good. <laughs> if it was once per turn, it's not even once per chain. Nothing like your opponent's thrown down a dark hole and you're like, all right, fine, negate. And they throw down something else, like, I don't know. Offerings to the doomed, that, that's never going to happen. But it's the only quick effect spell I can think of. And then you're like, all right, fine, negate. And they're like, what? Yeah, it's an imperial order on legs. It can negate as, as, as many spells as you'd like, as long as you have cards in your deck in order to mill, in order to activate it. Like, that's barely even a cost. The only thing holding Natty Beast back is that it is very, very landlocked to particular decks, and a lot of those decks don't utilize that graveyard mill quite as well as they probably could. But, uh, Obedient Schooled is a broke freaking spell card, and it makes this thing just freaking fine. So, uh, yeah, that is, I, th I think that is plenty well good enough. Gotta love Big Kitty. Like that you're broken, broken like me. Maybe that makes me a fool. Number three is Ancient Fairy Dragon. Ancient Fairy Dragon. <laughs> One of the Cider Dragons managed to get its way on this list, you know? Uh, we did it, boys. We did it. Fucking idiot. Team 5Ds or whatever. I don't know. I've never seen it. Generic level 7. Sweet. What do? Once per turn, you can special summon a level 4 lower monster from your hand. Pooh. Nice. Can't conduct your battle phase the turn you do this. Yeah, you're probably making it going first anyways. Who gives a shit? <laughs> There's a reason why this banned. That alone would be a really fantastic effect because you know what you want to do when you're synchro summoning? Synchro summon more! You know what's a good way to synchro summon more? Summon more shit! But that's not all it does. Once per turn, you can destroy all the field spells on the field. I know, it seems really obscure. Gain a thousand life points for some random reason, and then add a field spell from your deck to your hand. Ooh! If your opponent's got a field spell, you can nuke their field spell, search your own field spell. Broke! Or you can blow up your own field spell that like does a thing when it's killed or whatever. So like that's also nice. You can proc your own effect. This does a lot. <laughs> Where's my Melfi Forest? How do the Melfis not have a Melfi Forest field spell? I'm still thinking about Natty Beast. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon. It's good. It's a good. It's a good card. Number two, Boral Sword Dragon. This Link Force is probably arguably one of the best Link Force in the game, simply because its ability to just attack a bunch of times and double its attack power, whatever the hell this damn thing does, just ends games like crazy. Also, I'm just pulling your leg. <laughs> it's Boral Old Savage Dragon, that, that, that's, the, that's the joke. <laughs> What's this savage boy do? If this card is synchro summoned, 
I told you, they, they, they just do stuff when they're synchro summoned. That, that's, that's why quick effect synchro summoning is good. You can equip a link monster from your graveyard. <laughs> it's at least related to the joke in a way. And if you do, place Boral counters on this card. Equal to that link monster's link rating. This card gains attack equal to half the attack of the monster equipped to it. <laughs> what else does it do? When your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can take one of those counters off this card. Negate the activation. Doesn't destroy. Remember that. You can only use this effect once per turn. Well, it's a generic synchro monster, so that's extremely powerful. It's a level eight, so like it, it it's begging to get synchro summoned. That's so easy. And it, it's a once per turn negate. Now you're probably thinking, but Dave, it's got a limited number of negates. <laughs> and you know, that that's true, I, I guess. However, if, if even with like a link two on this thing, it gets two counters. Uh, this thing is gonna be big. And it's probably next to something else on your board that's also disrupting your opponent's plays because you got this far. Normally you end on like Savage Dragon. You really think you're going to be able to like live like the, the three or four turns it is to, to, to spend all this thing's counters? I, I doubt it. Even with a Link 2, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have plenty of counters to carry to the end of the game. It might as well not even have them. All right, we do have an honorable mention, uh, mostly because I can't have two number ones. I think Long Dong here isn't necessarily broken. He's banned, which gives him a lot of kudos and gives a lot of points for this kind of thing. But he's abused by like one deck, dinos, and that deck's really good. It doesn't even need him anyway. Once per turn, you can send a Wyrm monster from your deck to the graveyard to search a Yang Zing card. Most of the times you're probably getting pillars because pillars is an omni negate. It's a good, it's an extra deck monster that searches your counter trap card. That's a pretty solid effect. And if this card leaves the field, you can special summon a Yang Zing from your deck. It's like the only one that doesn't miss timing in that whole archetype. I think that's, I think, Banning Dang Long is a little harsh, so that's why I'm gonna give him an honorable mention because he could be number one. I think his ban is I think his ban is a little un unwarranted. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to MetaMat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. And number one or number one, two, one, one A, I don't know. Because it's the same damn card as Dang Long. Is Ib, the World Chalice Justicar. Go ahead, Dave. Explain how World Chalice works. Or Orcus. Whatever other hell deck uses this card and I never played. I don't know how to use this card. Never played it. Uh, -uh. so now we're going to see if Dave can come up with why it's so good off the top of his head by reading its effect right now. It's just Dang Long, Dave. It's a level 5 water spellcaster tuner monster. Nice! Level 5 and a synchro tuner monster does open your options up to funsy stuff, I suppose. For this card synchro summon, you can treat one world chalice normal monster as a tuner. World chalice. Oh, it's combo! I don't know! You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If this card is synchro summoned, you can add one world legacy card from your deck to your hand. What is the target? I haven't played against this deck in so long. Maybe it's the counter trap. I don't, I don't even, I don't know. And if this synchro summon card is sent from the field to the graveyard, like if you're Link or Synchro or doing something with it for your extra deck, you can summon a world chalice monster from your deck or graveyard to the field. That is, that's really good. It has an alternate summoning condition, which is really good for it because that means you, you know, it opens up your combo plays in order to be able to summon the damn thing. It adds a card when it's summoned and it special summons when it leaves the field. You know, just like Dang Long. Uh... That's uh, that's really good. It mitigates its own advantage really, really well unless you continue your, your, your combo plays. Got it! I don't know how to synchro summon, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a good card. Why don't you down in the comments below tell me how I did? Besides, Dave, you suck and you're dumb and unsubscribe. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. Um, I, I've been putting off the best of synchros for a while, and I'm sure you can tell why. I, I don't like this mechanic. I don't know why. I love Xyz, so it's not like I'm an old Yugi boomer and I just don't like new things. I, it's not even new, frankly, but I, I, I just, I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. And these cards are fantastic. 
But anyway, let me know in the comments below why I'm the worst Yu-Gi-Oh player ever. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the better well, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!